Hello everybody, it is a beautiful and breezy day over here, which is all right, and we are gonna learn why that breeze is all right as we go. As I've mentioned time and time again, spring is such a wonderful time. Everything is waking up, the colors are vibrant, and new life is everywhere. Today, we are going to learn about pollination. First, we need to head to the backyard and learn about some flowers. We have a lot of flowers around our yard, so naturally we have a lot of pollinators. We're gonna to head to our apple tree, which is covered in really pretty blossoms. So we've seen a ton of butterflies, birds, and bees, and other pollinators hanging around there. So let's go check it out. All right, we are at the apple tree here. And if you look very closely, some of these guys have already lost their petals, this limb in particular. Here we go, this one still has. These are the petals. Now, if you look very closely, you see these little yellow things? Oh, look at there's somebody here. Oh, just kidding. If you look very closely, you will see little yellow dots at the tips of these pointy things. That is called the stamen. These things are called the stamen, and those little yellow things on top are pollen. So now there's kind of a more green one right in the middle. That's called the pistil. And in order to make fruit, which this one is going to make an apple, pollen needs to go inside the middle of the plant into the stamen in there. Then the bottom part of this flower is going to get bigger and bigger and eventually it'll turn into a fruit. Now, how does the pollen get into the pistil? Well, it has help from pollinators. If we look closely, we can see, we have been seeing a lot of different pollinators. Big bumblebees are really pretty cool to see around here. I'm not seeing any now, but they do an excellent job as well as honeybees. Those are probably the two most common pollinators that we hear about, but we also have butterflies, hummingbirds, moths, and other beetles. In, some of the in front of some of the flowers that I planted this spring, this one is a snapdragon. If you've ever seen a snapdragon, if you squeeze them gently, this one doesn't want to cooperate with this one. I got this one to open. So, look closely and you'll see the yellow dots in there. That's the pollen, which is attached to the stamen. And the pistil is actually in the middle. So the pollen has to go down in the middle. Snapdragons are a little bit different than some of the other trees because they don't actually produce fruit. One third of all the fruits and vegetables that we eat actually comes from pollination and mostly from bees. So like I said, a lot of these are native perennials as well as some weeds that grow in here. But the bees and the other pollinators are tr attracted by bright colors. So these are gonna grow different flowers. They haven't started yet. That one's a dark purple, yellow, more snapdragons. There's other stuff. Here's an orange one. Here's some ones that I haven't gotten planted yet. All sorts of different colors and those are gonna attract different pollinators and what we All right, let's talk about the role that pollinators play in this, specifically bees. So we know that they buzz around from plant to plant collecting pollen, but they also collect nectar, which is sweet, sugary, and gives them energy. So they collect all that pollen and nectar that they can, and they head back to their colony. So have you ever heard of a beehive? A beehive is different than a bee colony or a nest. A beehive is a man-made structure that is used for beekeepers to raise bees and sell their honey, which lucky for us, bees make two to three times more honey than they ever need. So we get to enjoy it. And thankfully, there are around 212,000 beekeepers in the United States. Something that's really cool is one of our very own Tony that we met a while back has had his fair share of beekeeping over the years and he let us use some of his equipment to see what it looks like up close. Before we go see Tony's stuff, we're gonna talk a little bit about how honeybees you use pollination. Honeybees are among the most common pollinators that we talk about and there are so many cool facts about them, which is cool because it is Fun Fact Friday. If you get up close to a lot of different pollinators, while they're drinking nectar from the plant and collecti collecting pollen, pay close attention to their legs where you're gonna find pollen baskets. So a bee's main job, as we know, is to drink nectar and collect pollen, with the exception of the queen bee that stays in the hive or the colony. Her job is to lay eggs. She will lay up to 2,500 eggs per day. These hatch will 
These eggs will hatch after three to four days and eventually grow into adult bees. Bees are insects. They have six legs and three body parts. And they also have four bees. When their wings move fast, we hear the buzzing. That buzzing is those wings beating up to 200 times per second. So one Mississippi. A bee's wings just flapped 200 times. That is crazy. You've also probably heard about a bee's stinger. Not all bees have stingers. Those that do have stingers don't actually want to sting you. They'll only do it if they're feeling frightened or need to protect themselves from other animals that are near their nest. There are lots of types of bees, but the two most common bees that we typically hear about are bumblebees and honeybees. Bumblebees are easy to spot because they're big and really fuzzy. Honeybees are a little bit smaller and not so fuzzy, but both bees, both bees make honey. Bumblebees only make a little, while honeybees make a lot. Both bees also live in those colonies that can be home to 60,000 bees in just a single colony. Most of the bees in the colony are worker bees and well, they do most of the work. There are lots of jobs for them to do like building the hive and keeping it healthy, but their main job is to get food and nectar from the flowers and gather pollen. When the bee is loaded up with as much nectar and pollen as she can take, she goes back to the hive to feed those baby bees and the queen. Then they'll turn most of that nectar and pollen into honey. They spend most of their day collecting pollen and in the evening they don't sleep, they continue to work. People who collect honey are called beekeepers and the practice of beekeeping dates back to at least 4,500 years ago. There was actually honey found in King Tut's tomb and it was still good because honey never goes bad. Approximately one third of the food we eat is a result of honey bee pollination. Their lifespan is about six to eight weeks, and in that time, they will fly the equivalent distance of one and a half times the circumference of the earth. During trip to flower to flower, a bee will visit anywhere from 50 to 100 flowers. The buzzing that we hear is their wings beating 200 times per second, and in order to make one pound of honey, a bee must fly 55,000 miles. The bees in the hive must fly 55,000 miles. So they are busy bees. Also, have you heard the saying that's the bee's knees? Bees don't actually have knees. Interesting. Let's go down and see what kind of things Tony has in his beehive that he sent with me to teach you about. Okay, so this is the beehive that he sent with me and I took the lid off. There's things in here and I'm not gonna pretend like I know what everything is in here because I don't. This looks like it is the mask that he would put on to protect his face. Now this is their home, so they need to protect themselves because they might sting you to protect their territory. This would be a hat, a little helmet. All right, let's pull out. Here's the honeycomb shape. Isn't that cool? So this is what there's gonna be. Her eggs are laid in these combs and where the honey is gonna go. There's two of them in this box and here's the lid to keep them in there. I don't know what this is. Tony might be able to tell us. Maybe we can get him to comment on the, on the whole video. So this is the beekeeping beehive. All right, so we learned about the parts of a flower. We learned how flowers are, how they use pollination to produce fruit and all sorts of different facts about honeybees. Can you think of any other pollinators? We talked about a butterfly and might have mentioned a hummingbird, moths, but ants, wasps, other beetles, and bats are also other pollinators. And of course, wind, which we're experiencing a fair amount of today. Thank you so much for tuning in to learn about bees and pollination. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Come out and visit us in the parks. Bye.